Hello, Mr. Telson here. In this short video, I'd like to show how to set up a sliding shelf. Sliding shelves can be set up two ways very easily. Either we start with an ordinary shelf and we just define the parameters of this ordinary shelf so that we can we can put in some hardware which allows it to slide if we're using hardware. This way this is very easy to do. This way we just go into say we go into our libraries method and we go into a sub method and choose divisions and let's add a new type of division. This new type of division we'll call it a sliding shelf. A sliding shelf. Now we're going to characterize this division, give it parameters. We're going to say for instance this this particular the sliding shelf will be using the parameter shelf 3 so it's in the list of types of shelves we're going to use shelf 3 and it's going to concern when the when the shelf 3 is linked to the sides and when it's linked also in the to the uprights all uprights so sides and uprights when we get a sliding a shelf that is against linking to a side or an upright we're going to give it just a recess and the, re the, the recess parameter means the distance between the end of the shelf and the link the part that's linking to the side or the upright we're giving it a recess and this recess will is the play between the shelf and the, and the, the side that corresponds to the thickness of the hardware you're using to slide the shelf on. So if it's a, a draw slider, for instance, it's likely to be something like 16mm, but this will depend on the model of the draw slider you're using, of course. Or if you're using other things, it doesn't have to be hardware, of course. And when you click OK, this creates a, this creates a, um, a division sub-method which will enable us to put in the sliding shelf. So let's just say OK, and let's pipe this cabinet. Now we have the cabinet here, let's put in uh, the sliding shelf. So we add shelves, and we add the shelf 3, which is now our sliding shelf, and we'll put it in the middle of the cabinet, and we'll see that the shelf now comes in with the distance of 16 millimeters between the shelf and the sideboard. In 3D, we can have a look at the shelf, and we can see here a 16 millimeter gap allowed for putting in the hardware. Now let's put in some hardware. If we say that this particular shelf here, uh, let's say it's linked to the left side, we're going to add a fittings link, and we're going to say we we'll add this link to the left side, and let's put in a fitting. Um, let's I have a sliding shelf fitting here. I'm just going to show you how to how to set up the fitting before. If we go into the fittings library, I've already set up a, a sliding shelf fitting, which is a fitting, which is this one here. Let's go over here and let's have a look at how I set it up. This fitting here is set up as just um, holes, pilot holes which are drilled at particular positions along the side and on the underneath of the shelf here. These are just pilot holes where I'm going to be able to put the screws for the slider. Okay, so that has already been set up. I won't go into setting that up here. I'll, you can go have a look in the other videos for setting up hardware to see how exactly to set it up. What I'm going to do now simply is to, is to on the left hand side, I'm going to put that fitting. So fittings, I'm going to put it in as a sliding shelf fitting, which is only a series of pilot holes. And I'm going to give it a rule, a rule to be set up. And if we look in the 3D, we can now look in x-ray view and we see the fitting, the pilot holes being drilled in the side of the cabinet and underneath the shelf for the, the, the shelf um, slider or the runner. We'll do the same thing on the right hand side of course, put a fittings link. Right hand side, put the same fittings in, in here, the sliding shelf fitting and the rule 50-50. And now we have the sliding shelf set up as a manufacturing element that we, it won't slide. If I put a, if I ask it to slide, it won't slide because it's actually a fixed shelf. But it is, has all the fittings and the play necessary for to be a sliding shelf. Another way we do it, if you want to make the shelf slide itself, is another way is to simply put in, say, uh, a drawer and get rid of everything on the drawer except the sliding, except the sliding bottom. Let's do it here, for instance. If we want to add a drawer here. Add a drawer. Let's just put one drawer. 
And the assembly, in the assembly details, all we want is the bottom of the drawer. And here, the lateral slack of the bottom, we're going to give it 16 millimeters, which is the distance between the side and the, and, and, and the side of the shelf. And the bottom drawer slack will correspond to the distance between <coughs> the bottom of the drawer and the actual um, bottom. And let's add this drawer now. Now we have a drawer. If we look at it in texture view and open it, we can actually open the drawer now. And we see we have a front on the drawer here. We can see that the shelf is actually sliding same dimension as the other sliding shelf that we put in, which doesn't slide in, you know, in, in stair designer, uh, uh, polyboard, sorry. Um, but this bottom here is actually sliding at four millimeters above that shelf there, and that's 16 millimeter plate on the side here. But on the drawer, of course, we still have the front. The way to get rid of the front is very simple. We just select the drawer, take the drawer, and um, before I before I um, go into it, let's we have to set up. We're going to give it a materials. We're going to modify the materials. And we're going to give it a what I call a nil material. A nil material is, a, is an imaginary, a virtual material that you can use when you want the board to appear to be there for the machining, but it's not actually there. So the way you set that up is you go into a libraries and materials, and I'll have a, you can have a look at one of the materials I've set up here. It's a nil 19, which is a 19 milli board, but it's a virtual board. This virtual board has um, there's no price. <laughs> It's called nil 19 and has a thickness, no grain, of course, no description, doesn't really matter. And this ma material, I set that material up in the library, and then I add, I, I take the front of the board of the drawer, and I use the material, the nil material, nil 19, as a virtual material for the cabinet. And when I go back into the cabinet now, of course, the cabinet has no more front because it's a, a nil material. And uh, and we can open and close the, the drawer. It slides over the shelf. If we want to get rid of the shelf here, we do, have to, we do the same. We go into, if we don't want the shelf underneath the, the sliding shelf, we've got to go in here and select it, take the shelf, and put the shelf now as a nil material, nil 90. And now we have just the sliding bottom of the drawer. Okay, uh, just one thing I forgot to say was that the in the um, libraries um, the nil material. If I look at the nil material, I just I think I forgot to say that um, nil 19 is transparency 100. That's what I forgot to say. Transparency 100. Okay, okay. So that's how you put in a sliding drawer. A sliding a sliding drawer sliding shelf. Sorry, sliding shelf. Two ways. Two simple ways. Thank you. Goodbye.